How are you and welcome to the brand new edition of the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex. The show where we bring you important unstart or written questions asked by the members of the Upper House and the response given by respective departments and ministries. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat K. Well, thanks Kriti and thanks to our viewers for watching Question Hour. So Kriti, let's begin with the show. And the first question in this edition is from member P. Wilson and this question pertains to the Ministry of Law and Justice. And Mr. Wilson has asked the government whether it plans to establish regional benches of Supreme Court. But replying to this extremely important question, the Ministry said that according to Article 130 of the Constitution, the Supreme Court shall sit in Delhi or in such place or in places as Chief Justice of India may with approval of the President from time to time appoint. Now, representations have been received from time to time for various quarters by establishment of benches of the Supreme Court in various parts of the country. The Law Commission in its 229th report had also suggested that constitutional bench be set up at Delhi and four secession bench be set up in northern region at Delhi, southern region in Chennai or Hyderabad, eastern region at Calcutta and the western region at Mumbai. The matter was referred to a Chief Justice of India who was informed that after consideration of the matter, the full court in this meeting held on 18th of Feb in 2010 found no justification for setting up of benches of Supreme Court outside Delhi. In writ petition, that is number 36 of the year 2016 on the establishment of National Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court, with its judgment dated 13th of July 2016, deemed it proper to refer the aforementioned issue to constitutional bench for authoritative pronouncement. And Rajat, Member P. Wilson joined us on the Question Hour show and this is what he had to say on government's response and he also made several suggestions. Take a look. And joining us on the Question Hour show is Rajat Sabha MP and questioner Mr. P. Wilson. Sir, welcome to Rajat Sabha Television. Thank you so much for talking to us. He was a question about establishing regional benches in the country. Looking at the pendency of the cases, how important is the issue? It's very, very important. Constitution, when it came into force, it has provided Article 130, a power uh, to the Chief Justice to have as many as benches in the country. So over a period of 70 years, that Article 130 has not been invoked. Today, we have 133 crore people and uh, the judges, number of judges in the Supreme Court is only 34. So therefore, considering the population judge ratio, it is very, very less. Another thing is, a person who is residing in Tamil Nadu, particularly down south from Kanyakumari, when his case has to go to the Supreme Court, he has to travel all along from Kanyakumari to Delhi. And he has to stay there and he has to engage a lawyer. Suppose a lawyer who has conducted the cases in the High Court, he has also to accompany him. In that way, the cost of litigation increases. Therefore, it is better to have this Article 130 invoked by the Chief Justice and have a regional benches. In fact, the Law Commission in its report has clearly said that we can have a cessation benches in uh, regional benches in uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta and Chennai. So covering the southern, northern, eastern and western regions. So that is the need of the hour and uh, access to justice is a fundamental right. So every citizen has got this right. So you can't prevent him merely because of the cost not to have this right invoked. Therefore, this is an hour, uh, this is a need of the hour and uh, the Chief Justice has to think about this, the request uh, requirement of the people and uh, of this uh, country and uh, therefore this Article 130 has to be invoked. That is why periodically I am raising this uh, in Rajya Sabha. So sir, what's the way ahead? This deadlock, there is a deadlock. The Chief Justice, the last Chief Justice in 2010, 18th of February, in the full court meeting, has denied this uh, invocation of Article 130, saying it is not possible. Therefore, the deadlock has to be broken. The deadlock can be broken only by the Parliament. The government has to bring in a legislation, either amending Article 130 and uh, taking away the powers of the Chief Justice and uh, making it mandatory to have a regional benches in the southern region, northern region, uh, and western and eastern region. That is the only way out to come out from this problem. Otherwise, the difficulty is the Chief Justice is not able to exercise this power and the government should necessarily step in. I request 
the Honorable Law Minister that uh, the issue relating to the benches of the Supreme Court uh, has to be necessarily considered. Uh, as I said earlier, lot of litigations are to be fought in the Supreme Court and uh, merely because want of time, the judges are not able to hear the matters. And invariably, I am not casting any aspersion against any judge, but invariably, because of the burden on the Supreme Court, the cases are not being admitted and are dismissed at the initial stage itself. Therefore, at the right time, the Honorable Law Minister should look into this issue and to bring out an amendment to the Constitution, either making it mandatory uh, by amending Article 130 and uh, setting up of the uh, benches of the Supreme Court, regional-wise, and all the constitutional matters, that alone, the Supreme Court having its principal bench at uh, the New Delhi, they can hear the constitutional matters. So, certain powers can be given to the Chief Justice, like when regional benches, there are uh, different opinions among the regional benches, he can have the power to club together, posting of the judges to the regional benches, all this can be streamlined. This can be done only by bringing a suitable legislation amending Article 130. Right, sir, you're making a very important point there. Thank you so much for talking to Radha Sabha Television. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, moving on to the next question, that was asked by member Lal Singh Badodia from Ministry of Finance. The member asked whether it's fact that business of the fake currency notes is flourishing in various parts of the country, and if so, whether government proposes to take any steps to prevent it. Responding to this query, the government says that as per the data of National Crime Records Bureau, there is a declining trend in fake Indian currency notes seized during the years 2017, 2018 and 2019. The Government of India has taken various measures to check the smuggling and circulation of fake currency notes in the country, which include the following. Now these are, FICN Coordination Group has been formed by the Ministry of Home Affairs to share intelligence or information among the security agencies of the state or centre to counter the problem of circulation of fake currency notes. A terror funding and fake currency cell has been constituted in NIA to investigate terror funding and fake currency cases. A memorandum of understanding has been signed between India and Bangladesh to prevent and counter smuggling and circulation of fake currency notes. Security at the international borders has been strengthened by using new surveillance technology, deploying additional manpower for round-the-clock surveillance, establishing observation posts along the international border, erection of border fencing and also intensive patrolling. And let's move on to the next question that has been asked by member Sushil Kumar Gupta and this question pertains to the Ministry of Tourism. And the member has asked the government whether it is a fact that ministry will fund the travel expenses of tourists who visit 15 destinations in a country in a year and submit the photos on the website of the ministry. When they reply, the government said the Ministry of Tourism has no scheme for funding the travel expenses of tourists for visiting destinations in the country. However, the Ministry of Tourism has launched Deko Apna Desh initiative on my government platform to promote domestic tourism in the country. Deco Apna Desh initiative encourages citizens to take a pledge to visit at least 15 tourist places by the year 2022 to witness India's amazing diversity and realize the mission of Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat. Ministry of Tourism is providing small souvenirs, frame certificates of pledge taken to those registered on the My Government platform to provide an impetus to the initiative. The Ministry of Tourism undertakes promotional activities in domestic markets through its schemes, domestic promotion and publicity, including hospitality. Now, under this scheme, Ministry of Tourism promotes India as a holistic destination under the Incredible India brand line. A part of its ongoing activity, the Ministry releases print, electronic, online and outdoor media campaigns in domestic markets to promote various tourism destinations and products of the country. In addition, the Ministry, under its schemes, Swadesh Darshan, Prashad, and assistance to central agencies provided provide central financial assistance to state government, union territory administration, central agencies for development of tourism infrastructure across the country. Well, moving on to the next question that was asked by member Ambika Soni from Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. The member asked whether the rate of solar energy installation has been declining in the past. Well, the response given by the government is in negative. The government says that during the period April 2019, to February 2020, a solar capacity of 6.23 gigawatt was added in the country as against 5.5 gigawatt during the same period in the financial year 2018-19. Further, 
On 29th of February 2020, a cumulative grid-connected solar power capacity of 35.07 gigawatt has been established in the country with additional 21.35 gigawatt under various stages of implementation and 31.27 gigawatt under various stages of bidding. The government has taken various steps to boost solar energy production in the country. These include announcement of target of installing 100 gigawatts of solar capacity by the year 2022, waiver of interstate transmission system charges and losses for interstate sale of solar and wind power projects to be commissioned up to December 2022, permitting foreign direct investment up to 100% under automatic route, notification of standard bidding guidelines to ensure distribution license to procure solar and wind power at competitive rates in cost-effective and transparent manner, declaration of trajectory of renewable purchase obligation up to the year 2022, and lastly, implementation of Green Energy Corridor project to facilitate grid interaction of large-scale renewable energy capacity. And now let's move on to the last question of this edition of Question Hour, which has been asked by member El Hanumantaya, and this question pertains to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And the member has asked the government about the beneficiaries of Ayushman Bharat scheme. In its response, the ministry said that Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana is an entitlement-based scheme and no registration or enrollment of beneficiaries is required for availing benefits under the scheme. However, in order to create awareness and facilitate easy availing of benefits, e-cards have been issued to beneficiaries after verifying their identities under the scheme. Now, as on 12th of March this year, that is 2020, over 12.58 crore e-cards have been issued and 90,49,900 hospital admissions have been authorised under the scheme. As of the said date, that is 12th of March 2020, under Ayushman Bharat Arogya Karnataka, that is uh, Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana in alliance with the state scheme, 1 crore 18 lakh 49 thousand and 8 beenficiaries have been verified and 6 lakh 35 thousand and 772 hospital admissions have been authorized. So Rajat, these were the important questions and answers in this edition of the Questionnaire show. But on the other side, we'll have Prashn Kal, the Hindi version of Questionnaire with our colleagues Arvind Singh and Priti Singh. Please don't go anywhere.